and the resources and so on. Coronavirus disclosed a general view of human behavior. It is panic, fearful for death and giddy in nature. We need to change. Lots of fear till persist. Fear educate people socially and hence develop a kind of discipline. Individual people need to reinforce the message that this virus is not the end of the world. A new system approach that will integrate biology, psychology, political philosophy, along with economics into a broad ecological framework has to be constructed. Coronavirus was a strict warning bell. We humans have to amend ourselves before the final bell rings. This is not the first pandemic that we are facing and witnessing. The world has undergone through many epidemics and pandemics since the creation of the world itself. As we all are concerned with literature and all are lovers of literature, it will be interesting and equally important to see how the writers of different genres of literature projected such pandemics in their literary text and how it helped in saving humanity and saving the world. And to explore these things today in this session, we have Honorable Dr. Dushant Nimawat, Associate Professor in English, Gujarat University, Ahmedabad, Gujarat, who will talk on the topic, portrayal of crisis in literature, warning and shaping the humanity. What an innovative topic has been chosen by him. I will welcome you, Dr. Dushant Nimawat. Namaste from Namaste. This outbreak has its worldwide lockdown and home quarantine phase gave rise on creativity also. Such creative outputs we have observed through social networking, different tweets, Facebook posts, WhatsApp status and posts, YouTube channels, and even on TikTok. It would be interesting to see how this pandemic worked and infused the language in both positive and negative forms. And to explore these things, we have Dr. Amitabh Vikram Divedi, head of the department and director of School of Language and Literature, Sri Mata Vishnu Devi University, Katra, Jammu and Kashmir, who will talk on his topic, language and creativity during the pandemics. Innovative innovations, conformity, and incongruence in language with reference to COVID. I welcome you, my friend, Dr. Amitabh, welcome. And to chair this session, we have Dr. Iti Sri Sarangi, Associate Professor of English, KIIT University, Bhuneshwar, Odisha. Welcome, my friend, Dr. Iti Sri. Let me introduce our first guest, Dr. Dushant Nimavat. Dr. Nimavant is working as an Associate Professor in English at Gujarat University, Ahmedabad, Gujarat. He specializes in diasporic study, comparative literature, communication skills, and translation studies. He has 20 years of teaching experience at higher education. He has penned 14 books and equal book chapters. He has contributed more than 40 research papers to the reputed international journals. He has delivered more than 35 lectures at HRDC and other reputed institutions of higher education. He has delivered many keynote plenary talks at national and international conferences and seminars. He is a member of the board of studies with five universities, and he is a member of the Executive Council of Indian Association of Canadian Studies. I will introduce Amitabh and Itisri at their turns and request Dr. Dushanji to deliver his talk. Thank you, Dr. Dushanji. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Arvind sir. Uh, let me share my PPT first. Sure. Is it visible? Yes, yes. Yeah. Start. Start. Yeah, just just a minute. Yeah, yeah. On, on my screen it is not <laughs> seen. <laughs> Yes, uh, uh, respected chair, uh, Dr. Duyadi, uh, Dr. Arvind, and friends, those who are connected from uh, all over the globe. Uh, the topic that I wish to talk on is a uh, portrayal of crisis in literature, warning, and shaping the humanity. As uh, Arvind sir told that uh, we are facing this problem of uh, 
COVID-19. A uh, lot many things are being pondered upon, uh, whether it is about uh, education or even uh, right in society, whatever the problems that we are facing. Uh, but of course, uh, our concern at present is uh, literature. What is the change? The change is this only, that firstly, when we had some of these kind of diseases in past, we used to call them outbreak, right? We use this word. Then of course, we came to a word that widely was used, especially when plague, uh, right? Outbreak uh, that you, you had, right? In the past, all over the globe. Then we use the word epidemic. But now, of course, we are talking about pandemic. Pandemic, the word itself, right, pan, it means all over the globe. And of course, we are witnessing um, right all over the globe, right, in almost all countries, uh, right, the, the cases have uh, been, uh, in fact, reported, right, on, um, on record. And in a way, uh, still this uh, problem, right, would persist and we don't know the solution at all at present. Um, of course, we have, Right, in a way, come to some of uh, uh, right, the words that we are using at present. Uh, suppose uh, right, we haven't been uh, using these words frequently like quarantine, lockdown, lockdown for the first time in a way we have witnessed. Then PPE, the personal protective equipment. Right? So I think language-wise, right, these words would be used far and wide now. Previously, in a way, the word positive was a very positive word, but now it has turned into a negative word since we are facing this coronavirus problem. Uh, corona has brought the world on its knees in a way. No power, no wealth and position, no class that is spared, in fact, from the vicious infection of this coronavirus. Now, if we talk about, right, the title of this conference, it has this word crisis. So indeed we can say, or we could say that the notion of crisis has a long and complex history in the West. In classic Greek, the term crisis referred to a crucial decision or judgment between radically opposed choice, such as right or wrong, life or death, and was generally applied to legal, religious, and medical contexts. Uh, some of the experts that have talked about crisis, and if you look at right, uh, some of the um, experts, like suppose uh, in US, uh, right, there is an expert who uh, used the word right that the crisis began to identify a transition period, right, in fields such as politics or economics and became the fundamental mode of interpreting an historical time. So he means to say that it is, in fact, in it, crisis is considered as transition period, right, in fields, especially like politics or economics. And of course, historically, if we then later on interpret it, then like suppose if uh, we interpret plague, at present, then the, definitely we have some other notions in our minds. Modernity uh, can, in fact, be read as a series of interrelated crises, or as noted by Schiller, a single crisis that is constantly and permanently taking place. Uh, Koslek, he says that if we take the frequency of this term, crisis use as indicating the actuality of a crisis then the modern period since the turn of the 19th century can be called the age of crisis right so he means to say in fact the very advent of 19th century that brought about the word this crisis right into our dictionaries frequently now if we talk about literature then of course literature can be it has a 
right major impact on the development of society it has sharpened civilizations changed the political systems and exposed injustice literature gives us a detailed preview of human experiences allowing us to connect on basic levels of desire and emotion by reading narratives we can suppose empathize and understand others other suffering especially in reference to pandemic literature the literature of epidemics what we call or pandemics what we call then of course when we read that we also empathize we also understand the situation of others this idea of the others right is very important in literature literature is thought provoking it allows us to raise questions and gives us a deeper understanding of issues and situations and that's why perhaps i think we are talking about pandemic literature that it raises some question right and then of course later on once we understand it then of course or ponder over it then definitely a deeper kind of understanding of these issues and situations that we are facing would definitely uh, come on surface literature has served as a uniquely sensitive seismograph of the ages disasters or as a warning system for disasters still to come suppose science fiction right so in that sense we have been warned the great example 19 uh, in a way uh, 1984 then definitely some alarms some warning system for the disasters right in political scenario to come and therefore uh, right it works as a warning system or in a way sensitive seismograph the seismograph right suppose earthquake that you know that it gives a kind of warning so here also literature serves as a seismograph now if we connect this with the current situation then according to new research from the uk literacy charity the reading agency they say that almost a third of people are reading more as a result of quarantine so there is a rise in reading during quarantine because people are locked locked down in a way they are there in their houses only they have nothing to do in memory apart from of course right the kind of uh, you know, facilities that we have like uh, web series suppose they have been also very popular but at the same time right even uh, especially in Euro- european countries uh, and especially in italy right it happened that uh, uh, plague has been read frequently people have bought many books right? and uh, in fact uh, plague was kankamus plague was uh, the most popular book that was read during that time the thirst for books has been particularly strong in the age group of 18 to 20 years right in which 45% of respondent reported increasing their reading right so this was a kind of survey and this this survey proved that 45% of people admitted they have increased their reading and overall 31 percentage of the 2103 uh, respondents said that they had read more since the restrictions began on 23rd of march there in uk right so this is a kind of survey that gives you an idea that literature has provided a kind of solace a comfort right to mankind now what is the role of crisis or conflict because in literature we talk about conflict so what makes a book or movie exciting of course it is conflict what makes you want to keep reading to find out what happens at the end of the book again it's nothing but conflict right so crisis or conflict the image in literature and that's why it it is made interesting by it now this is very interesting john f kennedy said and of course if you google it you will also find this that when written in chinese the word crisis is composed of two characters 
one represents danger and the other represents opportunity right so here you have got a picture also first alphabet crisis right that uh, signifies danger and the another alphabet that signifies opportunity how right in a way significant it is that chinese people right if you go by the theories that are revolving uh, around us right then of course right chinese people have turned this danger into an opportunity for them there may be debates there may be some other things also right political things also uh, but at the same time again right this word is uh, in a way represents right danger but at the same time there is an opportunity also so in a way at present suppose we are passing by right passing through this uh, danger we call it a danger but it may turn into an opportunity also later on suppose our uh, societal uh, systems may get enhanced politically suppose people uh, politicians had to leaders had to uh, a kind of show their uh, right attitude positive attitude towards the nation in india we of course witness that that our honorable prime minister the present government decided that we shall have lockdown of course it is going to be harmful to economy but i think it was a choice between economy and humanity and our government our honorable prime minister chose the right, humanity over economy so this is this is the change that we are witnessing now this is very interesting because all the while when we talk about uh, pandemic or pand uh, pandemic literature right at that time we refer to kam now kam talked about crisis the word itself this is very interesting so shortly after world war 2 uh, kam was invited to united nations a uh, uh, united states to deliver a series of lectures he was asked to use his area of expertise like literature theater and philosophy to explain france to american audiences kamu refused to speak on literature or philosophy because in his own words these are only reflections of a more fundamental issue life and the struggle for humanity in his lecture entitled the human crisis delivered at uh, columbia university on march 28 uh, 1946 kamu immediately right note this one also that immediately after second world war kamu told of this struggle from the french perspective for the people of france the end of the war did not signify an end to the threat against humanity according to kamu this threat was a human crisis born out of moral decline and could only be overcome by creating an alternative human ideal to explain society's moral decline which he termed a monstrous hypocrisy kamu narrated four short stories these are the stories the story one the story goes like this that it takes place in a european capital in an apartment that has been seized by uh, gestapo the secret police of the nazi two accused men after an entire night of torture regain their consciousness only to find themselves tied up still bleeding and in the presence of the building superintendent uh, the superintendent likely having enjoyed a nice breakfast is cheerfully tending to his routine duties when one of the torture victims confronts the superintendent he angrily retorts these are worth noting words i never interfere with my tenants business right so he doesn't want to interfere into 
the problems right of his tenants simply because right the humanity has died during that time of course it is about second world war then second story story 2 in the second story kamu talks of a comrade who is being dragged out of his cell for his third interrogation his ears have been badly torn in the previous sessions so he wears a bandage around his head the german officer dragging him along is the one who conducted the first two sessions of torture hence the one responsible for the physical damage and yet he leans down and asks with an air of affection affection or concern how are your ears doing again this shows the insensitivity right that was there during that time story 3 the third story which inspired william stiron's award winning novel sophie's choice of course it was later on adapted into a movie also it is about three brothers uh, who are taken as hostages in an operation against greek insurgents just as one of the officers who took part in the operation is about to execute the brothers their elderly mother throws herself at his uh, knees and begs the officer to spare her children the officer responds that he will spare one of the children but on one condition the mother must choose which son leaves the mother chooses to save the eldest as he has a family to care for the other two children were executed here the choice for the mother and as she, she chose the elder brother the eldest brother because he had a family so again the choice right where you find that how humanity during that time right was adversely affected and the last story the story four the protagonist of the fourth story are a group of female insurgents including a friend of kamu captured and exiled on their way to france via switzerland they come across a funeral procession when the women uh, see the procession they burst in laughter and they say these things so that's how the dead are treated here again it shows that because they are laughing and they are they are speaking these words they are uttering these words right it shows that again the insensitivity towards humanity had died during that time now out of these stories how kamu wanted to suggest something according to right in a way he remarked in his lecture through these four stories that when moral decline creeps into even the tiniest capillaries of the society all that is left is nothing but power the choice is no longer between the just and the unjust but rather between masters and slaves where masters the superintendent the torturer the executioner will always be in the right and so the great human crisis drags on like this of course this was in reference to second world war now if we talk about crisis conflict then of course the most common kinds of crisis are men versus self which is internal one men versus nature of course it is external one men versus men that is external one again men versus society that is external again further of course divisions can also be there and with the advent of the uh, technology right we have this conflict in literature as well men versus technology again that is external men versus god or fate again that is external men versus supernatural that is also again external now men versus nature 
Books like Hunger Games have demonstrated the way a character is presented with the problem of accepting or enduring what is considered the norm of that society, but is but in crisis with the protagonist's moral values. To Kill a Walking Bird, again, a novel that features a law lawyer in a small American southern town in the 1930s defending a black man against a false charge of rape is another example of this type of conflict because the lawyer is in the conflict with the nearly everyone in their small community. Other examples of this uh, type of conflict, uh, conflict can be uh, 1984 or The Handmaid's Tale. Man versus technology. Again, uh, right, there is a character confronted with the consequences of the machines and uh, or artificial intelligence created by man. Uh, a common element used in science fiction writing that you find. Uh, Asimov's uh, iRobot right, is a class classical example of this uh, with robots and artificial intelli intelligence surpassing the control of man. Uh, man versus God or fate. Uh, difficult to differentiate from man versus society or men, uh, usually dependent upon the outside force directing uh, the path of the character. Uh, in Harry Potter series, right, you find this, uh, Harry's uh, destiny has been foretold by a prophecy. He spends uh, his adolescence uh, struggling to come to terms with the responsibility thrust upon him from the infancy. Uh, men, I'm skipping some of the things. These are all conflicts that I talked about, right? Uh, crisis, portrayal of crisis you find. Then, of course, in earlier literature also, right from Greek literature, we find. And, of course, in early English literature also that we find. Uh, but crisis uh, portrayed largely and exclusively, right, that you find in World War literature. Uh, in beginning, First World War, suppose. Then uh, early works were romantic sonnets of war and death, where, of course, uh, you find that uh, le leaders or heroes, the young soldiers were glorified, uh, marching off for the good of the country. And so in a way, it was uh, something that was glorified. Uh, then, of course, uh, right, you find uh, that um, Colonel uh, John McRae, right, he... Uh, talked about right some of uh, uh, the things uh, in a way he compared uh, right the fields uh, where uh, the poppy uh, seeds were grown right and uh, he saw some of the dead bodies uh, right uh, where there and uh, he wrote in uh, Flanders Field uh, the poem that uh, talked about uh, uh, memory uh, in a way. Uh, the death of his friend and fellow soldier would later be, right, in fact, used by allied militaries to recruit uh, soldiers and raise money uh, in uh, selling war bonds. Uh, right? uh, uh, I, I quote these lines as well. I quote, uh, in Flanders field, the poppies blow between the crosses row or on row. What mark our place and the uh, in the sky, the larks still bravely singing, fly, scared, uh, heard amid the guns blow. Right? So these are some of the examples in a way uh, that you find in beginning, of course, it was glorified. Uh, the town of literature later on shifted after, uh, right, in a way, some years uh, of tough uh, World War I combat. Uh, then uh, Wilfred Owen, he saw it, their duty to reflect the grim reality of the war right, in their work. So in uh, or when say this, uh, or all a poet today can do is warn. That is why the true poet must be truthful. So here, in fact, right, the warning comes against the war, the crisis, and the warning. In Anthem, for the doomed youth, again, Owen describes soldiers who die as cattle and the monstrous anger of the guns. Uh, Siegfried Sassoon, Right, he writes of uh, corpses, uh, face downward in the sucking mud, wellowed like trodden sandbags, loosely filled in his, in his uh, poem, Counter Attack. 
the trial women in love and the sound and the fury are of course example uh, right of uh, uh, in a way uh, that talked about the inner troubles right uh, that followed uh, world war 1 uh, world war 1 changed hemingway completely you know the story as he himself served as an ambulance driver during the war and of course he very wounded also in uh, on the front and uh, there he of course uh, was sent to hospital in milan where he fell in love with nurse and uh, then he of course talk, uh, had a plot of uh, the a farewell to arms right uh, of course you can say the most autobiographical novel of hemingway Uh, simply because it was his own experience uh, t s eliot of course in the westland considered to be one of the most significant poems right in a way of 20th century uh, april is the cruelest month we also had the same kind of april which was very cruel for us as well right so these are very famous lines i don't uh, want to spend much time on it Uh, then of course uh, again second world war uh, this japanese text right is something very interesting uh, while researching on this uh, i found out quite a good things about it uh, takenishi's the right which was written in 1963 uh, the whole plot of this book of course revolves around the second world war where the writer has shown that japanese children of that age uh, begin to tell their stories of uh, sorrow loss grief right during that time in where when uh, the writer wrote this novel of course there are the major themes of uh, you can say uh, of this uh, work is nothing but uh, death right and how Uh, the deaths of some soldiers or some people brought about sorrow loss and grief in these young minds children especially so it it may be considered a text that belongs to the category of uh, uh, children literature as well um, in fact in this book uh, the writer aki right has talked about uh, dislocation confusion alienation and there is search for meaning because second world war brought about that these kind of problems so men started thinking about uh, search for the meaning and when you read it as a reader also you find this dislocation confusion or alienation and you also try to uh, search for the meaning right so in that sense this is a very uh, worth reading in a way Uh, a book that talks about the crisis of second world war now if we come to the current crisis that is covid 19 or if we talk about literature of epidemics or pandemics uh, as i earlier mentioned that the sales of the plague have skyrocketed in europe uh, professor elis kaplan who works as yell university he says that people are saying in the french press what do you absolutely need to read in this time you need to read the plan they are saying that you need to read this plan by come and almost as though this novel were a vaccine not just a novel that can help us think about what we are experiencing but something that can help us he uh, that can help heal us right so in that sense people are reading this the plague by kamu not as just a piece of literature but they are almost identifying their own problems right and they find a kind of healing there and therefore they are reading of course kamu was talking about resistance and how people can come together in a situation to resist in his plague and that's why people are reading it kamu 
uh, in fact, uh, right, writes, each of us has a plan within him. No one, no one on this earth is free from it. So today we are witnessing that. So these are very, right, you, you can say fitting words, right, in this current scenario. Kamu is taking about, he's talking about our shadow, our capacity to do harm. He says there is more to admire in men than to despise. But you know it is a contest. Right? And of course, now people are talking about that why we are facing this kind of problem of attack of this uh, virus, which is deadly one. Then, of course, we that has reminded us to think about, suppose, the problem of the poor people, problem that we are facing with the environment because we have uh, right, polluted it. So it, it is, in a way, again, going back and think about humanity and the problems at large. Uh, then, of course, overview, right? If you see it, then why literature of pandemic? That, right, in a way, then literature that it provides a shelter, shelter of all kinds. It teaches us that uh, human nature is everywhere and always in the same and that crisis brings out the best and the worst of humanity. That's why perhaps, right, in fact, we are uh, finding this thing that uh, this it is human nature and that's why we have some uh, survivor stories. Uh, those who have won over, got victory over uh, this uh, uh, virus and have come out uh, successfully curing themselves. Right? So they, they, they may become the future stories. They are the heroes. Our doctors, suppose, the medical staff, they are the heroes. So in future, they may be the heroes they, of the, our text in literature. Uh, the way to deal with the plague is to do it together. That is what uh, Kamu also suggested. Uh, when crisis of all sorts defile the peace of individual and society, literature always reconnect, explain, and guide. Right? So you always have when mankind gets disturbed by some crisis, then Literature would provide that connection, right? To go back to our basics in a way, you, what you can say. It explains and further, of course, it brings out the problems on the surface and talks about the remedies as well. If writers stop writing, surely I think humanity will evolve back to Darwin's monkey, right? So in that sense, I believe strongly that literature has a very strong role to play in this uh, epidemic as well or pandemic as well. Now, what then? Aristotle talked about right, this beginning, middle, end. So stories have what Aristotle called beginning, right, middle and end. Crisis get resolved. Things start small, spin out of control, that has happened, reach to a climax that is eventually going to right, reach it, then they calm down again. So there will be again a, right, a world where we'll be free out of this virus because we men, mankind, right, perhaps might have invented some vaccines during that time or developed vaccines during that time. Humans are as storytelling animal. Each of us will have stories to tell one, five or 40 years from now about the pandemic of 2020. And as we had suppose stories of 9-11 uh, or Vietnam War or even partition suppose in India, right? So we had a crisis and we had some of, uh, stories to follow. So here also I think afterwards we shall definitely have some uh, fruitful uh, literature to come. Future, 
what about future now suppose uh, there may be some right uh, books on uh, pandemic uh, we can soon expect good books uh, talking about the covid 19 inspiring us uh, more right it may talk about uh, uh, the problems that people face during this time like lockdown uh, isolation quarantine right so these are some of the problems that we may face during that time uh, in literary studies of course uh, we shall face certain uh, right new uh, kinds of or we may be faced with uh, uh, or exposed with uh, some new kinds of literature uh, suppose uh, literature of isolation uh, some people may write literature uh to, just recently uh, you might have read uh, somewhere uh that uh, uh in fact uh, shakespeare wrote uh, the king lear uh, when he was in quarantine right so uh, and that's why he has used a uh, plague word right in uh, this drama quite frequent conclude sir please yes time time please, please. i request yes yes just just two slides only right so uh, literature of isolation may come which may be a type of literature or kind of literature literature of lockdown right because we were faced with uh, uh, this problem uh, economy uh, me we, writers may talk about there may be lockdown diaries right people may talk about their, their own experiences what they uh, experienced during that time and of course the migrant discourse the problem because of covid-19 that we are facing uh, the you may call it because as uh, uh, my area of research is uh, diaspora you may call it uh, reverse migration as well right so that is migrant discourse also that we may talk about now in times of crisis it is wonderful what the imagination will do right raskin bond say this so again it will happen that uh, the writers who always imagine the world right so in times of crisis like pandemic of course this imagination would do wonders and would prove of course so many such uh, right literature to come uh, seneca right he says that we become wiser by adversity prosperity destroys our appreciation of the right right and therefore i am very hopeful in a way that this pandemic will definitely uh, enrich literature uh, will definitely make us uh, uh, think about uh, humanity at large humanity uh, what the problems the issue that are facing and ultimately it is going to be very fruitful for literature right thank you thank you very much and thank you sir yours should be the you know really wonderful topic wonderful and so thank you thank you very much sir thank you in fact uh, i was about to interrupt you but uh, it was so important yes, that uh, i did not <laughs> uh, dr amitabh i request you core of uh, from my core of heart as you are a good friend of mine since last two decades uh, kindly save me <laughs> because i have very you know very very uh, i have to start the next session at uh, 10 10 okay uh, be okay. concise and instead of sharing uh, the ppt Just talk on your topic, okay? Uh, yeah. I'm very happy to introduce Dr. Amitabh Vikram Dwedi, uh, head School of Language and Literature, Sri Mata Vishnu Devi University, Katra, Jammu and Kashmir. Dr. Vikram, uh, Dr. Amitabh Vikram Dwedi specializes in language documentation, writing descriptive grammar, and he and the pres and the preservation of the rare and endangered languages in South Asia. He has authored many books and contributed numerous papers to many science citation index and Scopus journals, and contributed research chapters to knowledge resources, chiefly Ibscos and the encyclopedias published by Springer, Nature, Sage, Roman, and Littlefield, and ABC Silo publications. He has also been a co-director for a research project of ICSSR, and he is a poet too. He has published numerous poems. in different anthologies uh, journals and magazines worldwide with this brief intro i request him to 
deliver his talk as brief as possible to him dr amita yeah. please yeah thank you dr nawale and uh, <clears throat> i directly come to my presentation and i hope that all of you can see my slide uh, uh, are you able to see my slide yeah able to see but uh, skip some yeah. okay please i do it. like my presentation is a type like if you don't see the slide then you won't understand what i'm talking about no, it is okay. so uh, uh, basically like uh, the title uh, is language and creativity during the pandemic innovation conformity and incongruence in language with reference to covid 19 so uh, basically uh, i'm talking about creativity and i'm talking about creativity in language so uh, we all are creature as we know and why we are creature because we have this creativity in us so uh, if we go to the etymology of this word we find that creativity comes from latin creo meaning uh, give birth to or bring into existence uh, and the motivation of this presentation is from the lexical semantics semantic is basically the scientific study of meaning that we have and uh, according to uh, lexical semantics uh, human beings can create new meanings as and when need arises so like uh, human beings are always creative and creativity is like a tool to them and they can be creative any time when need arises this is the basic meaning and this is uh, actually the motivation of this uh, presentation uh, then uh, when we talk about creativity then we need to understand what is creative and what is not everything is not creative when we talk about creativity then we need to take into uh, uh two things like innovation and conformity like if we have innovation and conformity then we are creative and if we have incongruence then we are not creative so we need to make a fine distinction between what is creative and what is not for example like if someone is dying and i am singing a happy song then it is not creativity because it is violation of the conformity so we need to understand this innovation plus conformity is equal to uh, creativity that we have and uh, simonton uh, defined creativity as originality times appropriateness so something must be appropriate then it is original original plus appropriateness then it is basically creative otherwise it is not and we also find uh, samson gives two types of creativity uh, creativity one is like uh, f creativity that is fixed creativity and then we have e creativity that is your uh, expanded creativity so uh, basically uh, f creativity most of the time like when we create something uh, when uh, when we uh, rephrase something we use the same word same syntax then basically it is a fixed creativity it is basically not new creativity but we can say like uh, xerox xerox is basically a company but that, but later on we started using xerox as a verb then it is uh, it falls under expanded creativity this is basically the concept conceptual model to understand like what is creativity and what is not so um, uh, language and creativity i am looking through the lens of pandemic uh, covid 19 and uh, this is basically the model that we have and the entire data is analyzed through uh, these three things like phonologically at the sound level morphologically at the word level and syntactically at the sentence level that is basically the design of this presentation that how you can analyze data so this is basically the design that you have and uh, uh, this is like again uh, when you analyze creativity then you have two things like whether you are simply uh, you are based on uh, based on uh, let's say the textual model of creativity as roman jacobson says like words and sound play or you are just uh, uh, looking at the uh, performance since uh, uh, we are in a quarantine like we are facing this pandemic so uh, this performance level is not as possible because we are not meeting each other so often so we are not uh, doing creativity we are not performing uh, among people but actually like we are sharing memes or like we are making videos or we are we are sharing some textual uh, data and then we are showing this creativity and again like when i analyze this thing again my focus is on the roman jacobson word and sound play so that is basically the manipulation of linguistic form orally and what i am not doing that is i am not taking into consideration actions gestures gaze laughter smiles repetition so i am not considering this thing but i am only considering manipulation of the linguistic form here and the later data you will find very interesting for example like this is like one one creative instance like this is the first time in the history of english literature that the answer and the question are the same so what is this like uh, uh, who declared covid 19 as pandemic and who declared covid 19 as pandemic so when we an analyze this thing at sound level you find like who is an example of acronym or it can be example of abbreviation as, as such and also it has the feature of 
a uh, capital name so it's like all the things are capital so this is how this data is analyzed so this is again uh, a creativity that we that we have uh, next slide if you uh, go to like you find uh, again at the sound level so many coronavirus jokes out there it's a pandemic so like pandemic and analysis is like we are just changing this one sound a into a and this is again an example of neologism so it is again falls under e creativity like we are creating new words so it's like expanded creativity and because the change of only one sound that we have then uh, this is uh, an example of anta uh, anta uh, necklaces and uh, this is by the president of ghana so uh, we know how to bring the economy back to life what we do not know is how to bring people back to life now this type of repetition a single word or phrase is repeated in two different senses here the sense is like uh, bringing back to economy and here like uh, bringing back people to life this is an example of uh, anta necklaces so this is at syntactic level we find uh, this creativity that we have then uh, there is one such phrase like why do we call it novel coronavirus so then it's a long story now this is an example of homonym that we have like novel has two meanings so here it's the meaning of a long story like the novel that we read in literature as well and novel is also new so this is like a homonym and under homonym we have both type of examples like homophones and homographs other example we have that why didn't the sick guy get the job the flu uh, it flew over his head now flu and flu it is again an example of homonym but here it's an example of homonym and not the homograph because uh, the spelling is a uh, different so this is again a one type of creativity in language that we have then uh, we also find a certain type of witticism that we have in this and this witticism is basically a term coined by dryden in 1677 and witticism we use is basically for something that is clever and humorous so what should uh, what should you do if you don't understand a coronavirus joke then be patient like be patient like again like double meaning be patient in a sense like uh, you need to be patient and like be patient uh, as like you are the sufferer why don't chef find Uh, why don't chefs find coronavirus jokes funny they are in bad taste so again like this bad taste is associated with chef because we know like they deal with the food and so again it has a do uh, two meanings but these are the examples of witticism now this again is this is like 30 days had september april june and november all the rest have 31 except for march which has infinite like march because march is associated with the lockdown and this entire joke is related to that then what's the difference between covid-19 and romeo and juliet a uh, one of uh, ones uh, one is the coronavirus and other is the verona crisis so once you study romeo and juliet you find like there is a family feud and all such problems are there and that is the case of like verona crisis so again like they they just want to sound it uh, uh, funny and like uh, a use of fun sort of thing so that is again the example of witticism so we have this witticism type of thing that's also there uh then like this is uh, an essay on quarantine i try to modify it so you will find it really funny and interesting quarantine has made my daily routine too boring oh man i can i really can't wait to roam around i can't say when this lockdown will be over can you but soon i have realized that indoor is not such a bad place after all when my sweet wife has started coaching me new skills now i have been washing tons of utensils sometimes i think when this going to be over my wife says stay home stay safe what's the rush here when i call my friend their story is also same this pain is real we agree that we need to uh, all the luck now more than ever before i can't say more because my sore throat is on account of endless zoom webinars these days now you can say like the how much creativity is there like there are different uh, capitals places cities and country names and they are like uh, converted into like again the examples of mostly the examples of homonyms that we have and we have converted into like the essay on quarantine and it's like very much creative that we have similarly we have this covidian new wisdom like we have this actual phrases a stitch in time saves nine and we have like a sneeze in time infects nine honesty is the best policy home stay is the best policy curiosity kills the cat curiosity kills the dog like the example of china we have like the doctor was involved in that every cloud has a silver lining every crowd has a career lurk, a career lurking fine necessity is the mother of invention necessity is the mother of infection when the rome uh, uh, when in rome die as romans do we know the story of italy 
Rome was not infected in a day. Ignorance is the kiss. Fine. So it's like a very uh, united we die, divided we live. Out at night is out of mind. When the cuff is away, you can't come out and play. So this is actually phrases and how like change of one word, two word, one phrase, and sometimes a clause. You have you have you have derived a new Covidian wisdom. And later on, like if you can analyze these things. Uh, 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 using some uh, good linguistics model, then you can have uh, a very fine representation. You can write uh, even a paper on this. So this is like I end my uh, presentation here because there is the positive of time. So I don't want to explain it further. Uh, this is uh, from my side. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Amitabh. Um, actually, yeah. let me let yeah. me yeah. thank you all. Well, and both the sessions were really wonderful. Yeah, uh, one was a one first session was on a serious note started with a serious note but uh, second session was very humorous and we liked it both the sessions were really wonderful dr nimavat uh, like he started his presentation with a few images uh, which was very interesting like masked faces loneliness uh, confusion panic which uh, really described the outbreak uh, the pandemic and he also discussed how we witnessed lockdown for the first time and how, and, uh, how positive words are turn, turned to negative and how the notion of crisis has changed the long history and how such pandemic uh, changed the civilization, changed the political system and exposed the injustice. It was really, it was in, in, in fact, it was a very great session. And he also spoke about, mentioned about the sky fight, the science fictions, and uh, that has warned the humanity about these occurrences. So, um, and finally, he ended up saying that literature has also provided a kind of solace to my, mankind. So, sir, your session was very interesting. L next, I'll come to the second panel um, where uh, Dr. Uh, Amit, uh, Dr. Divedi, Dr. Divedi, I mean, discussed about the idea of creativity and, and its different facets. May it be playing with words, syntax, homophones, homonyms, and with a touch of humor. So, I mean, uh, both the sessions were really, really good. And it was more than my expectations. And I guess it, it's same with others also. I mean, they will also feel that it was more than their expectations. Thank you so much, both thank the panelists. And thank you, Arvindji, for uh, inviting I, I, me to I, the I, session. I, I can't introduce you due to the uh, paucity of the time. OK, I <laughs> a better uh, platform in this to come. And Amitabh, in every, every look, he is a creative. Very long look also. <laughs> well, I'm closing, closing the session. I have to start. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.